Okay, you could start whenever. Welcome back to another episode of the Born Again Again podcast. I'm Katie. And I'm Joe. And today we're going to be talking about uh, belief. And so I've been thinking about belief a lot and what it means for a Christian to believe and what it means for a regular person to believe, um, and especially amid all of the coronavirus fears and and news and like craziness that's going around. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been something that's been popping up in our news feed and on Instagram quite a bit lately. Um, I just wanted to talk about that. Yeah. How is everybody? Yeah. I feel like you guys it's are like, all fine. It's like... I think that everybody's sort of in the same boat, like trying to remain calm, but also like obviously feeling fearful and a bit of panic. And we've been just reflecting on how we would feel in the wake of this, like as Christians or like just trying to remember what would we think as Christians if this was going on? Mm -hmm. Like what would we believe it meant? And what, you know, would we think it was like an apocalypse or would we, you know, how would we like experience God in this time. Right. I'm yeah. like wondering like what I just, I'm sure that I would be praying like nonstop and thinking like that God is going to deliver us or, or maybe that this is something that he's using to turn his people's eyes towards him. Yeah. You know, does that seem right? Well, I've seen that posted around. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't think that when I was a Christian, I would have like gone down that path, but I've Mm -hmm. seen people like sharing stuff from churches and whatever that are saying like, this is due to man's sinfulness against Mm -hmm. God. And this is like his sign. He's trying to bring his people back to him and Mm -hmm. turn our eyes back to what's really important. And that's God. Uh, So I feel like some people, some Christians or any religious people probably think that. Uh And they're like, yeah, see, we told you heathens, this is what we said was going to happen. Actually, people have been talking and like I know, and talking I was, about the I'm so mad about that. I'm like, stuff it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but people have been talking about that. Like, is this a sign of the apocalypse? Because mm-hmm. I guess there's plagues with locusts in some other countries around the world right now. And then now there's this the pestilence. And so we're just waiting for the water to be turned into blood. And for what are the other ones? Frogs? Yeah. Frogs, frogs are one, right? Frogs. That one doesn't seem that bad. <laughs> it's actually really fun. <laughs> it's actually really cute. <laughs> No, but so anyways, yeah, I, I think that, um, it's just been interesting thinking about what would I have believed during this time about God? What, what would God's role have been in this? Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's hard to answer. I don't, obviously can't put my mind back in that place where it was when I was a Christian, but I do know that my faith and my belief was as real as I could have imagined it at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was, I would have told anybody that I was 100% certain that God exists and that he cared for us and that he was like here and his, his, his presence was like having an effect on our, on our existence. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I would have been praying about it too and probably praying to ask God to keep us safe and to ask God to keep as many people safe as possible. But it seems silly now even saying that, like, why am I asking why am I asking the guy who allowed this disease to happen to like Take protect me from the disease? I know. But- I feel like that's always the thing we were talking about it last night that like when people give thanks that God gave them strength through a hardship, it's like, I mean, we're, it's like a little bit Stockholm effect. Yeah. Like, oh, you're Stockholm like, syndrome. sorry, Stockholm syndrome. You're like loving your captor. He's the one who is in control and creating these problems for you. But then at the last minute, he gives you strength to get through them. You're like, oh, thank you for helping me not to be totally overwhelmed by this problem. And I, I understand you know. like the, the value of going through hardships to learn and to be strengthened and all of that. But it's, it's different when it's like, you're going through them involuntarily and it it's a side benefit. Like nobody, no loving father like necessarily gives you a million terrible obstacles or gives you disease just to see how you will <laughs> deal with it. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's, I think that's the thing. Cause I completely understand when people say, yeah, you grow from hardships, but it's like, that's true. That's yeah. totally true. But like who gave you the hardship and, what were, what were the intentions? Yeah. There was probably a better way to teach a lesson than like giving the entire world coronavirus. Yes. You know, like I feel like an omnipotent God could have come up with a better way 
to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if it's just our perspective now, but for me, all of this makes me see so clearly how we're all just humans and living creatures, animals on this planet, just together in whatever nature throws at us. You know, I wouldn't have that perspective as a Christian, but right now I feel so much like what's happening and how everybody just has to kind of get back to the basics of realizing what's important to them, you know, family or friends, health. And I think like that everyone across the board, whether you're religious or not, whether you're young or old, that's what we're connected by. Like, you know, that's the true connection, not like, not the Christian God or whether God's doing this to us, but just that we're all like mortal beings. Right. We're fragile. Fragile. And like, not only are we connected as humans, but I feel like we're, I I feel connected to nature in general and like animals who are uh, suffering because of wildfires or whatever in those times, like the animals, all they want is safety and security and like health. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's the same for us. Mm-hmm. It's this exact That's same. That's important. We're kind of helpless in the face. You know, I mean, we're not helpless because there's really smart doctors and stuff working on this and trying to develop vaccines. But like in the face of a global pandemic, in a way, we're kind of helpless and we sort of don't know how to take care of ourselves. Yeah. It, it's just like the rest of nature. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's a natural progression of things happening. And of course it's hard and terrible, but like to me, it points to the fact that there's no God like controlling all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I've been thinking about this a lot. Like how should, how should a good Christian respond in this scenario? Like how how would you, how would I have felt compelled to respond? Like Uh I would, I am always trying to think of like, if I was Christian, what would have been like the best Christian response to something like this? Mm -hmm. And I'm having a hard time with it because I think on one hand, um, God would want his, his like followers to be smart and to use logic and, and there's doctors and there's medicine available. And so like, yeah, we should trust what we have available and we should listen to the CDC and we should like be cautious because this is a serious thing. This is a huge disease and it could harm a lot of people. So we should really take it seriously. Mm -hmm. That seems smart. On the other hand, I think when I was Christian, I probably would have leaned more towards the camp of like, these are human problems and I have a God who's so much bigger than my problems. Mm -hmm. And that if I truly have faith in him, that he's going to carry me through because he says he's going to, you know, Mm -hmm. the Bible says that he's going to take care of us and that we should have nothing to worry about and that he's the one who sustains us. And so I feel like, I don't want to say this to like shame anyone, but I feel like in quotes, a good Christian should have enough faith and should have enough belief in God where they wouldn't be freaked out by anything. Mm -hmm. You know, they wouldn't be freaked out by a pandemic or by stress or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked about it before, actually, that at a certain point when I was a Christian, I felt like being stressed out was sinful Mm -hmm. because if you're stressed out, it means you don't trust God. Yeah. But I mean, that's like exactly Mm -hmm. what it means. And I feel like the Bible talks about that as well. I've heard a lot of sermons about that as well, which sucks. I mean, it like you're stressed out and then you have to add the stress on top of that of like, Oh, I'm also a bad Christian and a bad person. It adds like a level of micromanaging that, that is, crazy, crazy. <laughs> it's Just unsustainable. That, like people micromanage their emotions but no one micromanaging like that that pentecostal christian oh my gosh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no it's crazy I, I but i think i would have i would have felt that like it's mm-hmm. it's wrong for me to be stressed out by this it's wrong for me to dwell on it and it's in fact sinful and it's like offensive mm-hmm. to God that Not I'm so just... preoccu- preoccupied with this. <laughs> Why can't we just think like, oh, it's unhealthy for me to dwell on it yeah. instead of just like, yeah. oh, I'm a terrible. That's because in hindsight, it is unhealthy. Like nobody just like living in stress constantly. That's not like a healthy way to live. Uh-huh. And you should try to address that and you should not feel stressed out, you mm-hmm. know, but like adding shame on top of your stress is the worst possible way for you to deal with it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it didn't work. It didn't work for me back then. I can't imagine it's working for Christians who are trying to operate by that mode now mm-hmm. either. Um, but so yeah. you were talking before about belief and what Christians, you know, how they have their belief, but like, do they really believe what they're saying they believe? Yeah, right. Um, so and I think we've talked about this before in other episodes. Mm-hmm. Like if you really, really, really believe what you were 
saying you believed, like, would your actions change? Yeah, and all right. That. And it came up because I was thinking about uh, some of the churches who we've been seeing posting online. Some churches are closing their doors and there's, they have some spiritual message about why it's God's will for them to like not hold meetings on Sunday out of caution and all of that. But there's other churches who are saying, like, we're trusting God through this and we believe that it's the most important thing we should do right now to meet and gather and to pray as the body to try to like heal the earth. Mm -hmm. And so there's a bit of a disconnect there. And from my perspective, it sounds like while it may be stupider, one of those two groups has more belief. They have more faith mm -hmm. in God, you mm -hmm. know, um, again, I'm not saying that's the right way because I absolutely believe it's the wrong way, but mm -hmm. I'd say that in that moment, they have a stronger faith in God a stronger belief. And I'm just trying to wrap my head around like the impacts of that and, and taking that same idea and kind of interpolating, interpolating it out through the rest of their life. Um, and it related to something I remembered hearing when I was a Christian. Um, and this was from a sermon who, from, it was my favorite, like pastor at the time. He wasn't a pastor. He was a lead singer of a band called for today. And his name was Maddie Montgomery. Um, and I always considered him kind of like a spiritual father. I followed his stuff really closely. Mm -hmm. Anyways, in one of his messages, he brought up a really good point And he said that if you really believe in God, you really believe in heaven, you really believe that like sinners and the lost go to hell. How much do you have to hate your friends and families who aren't Christian to not be telling them about the gospel? Mm hmm. So basically, like, if you really believe in hell, you should be frantically telling everybody about their potential destiny that's mm -hmm. coming. That's like this impending thing that's coming to them. And I remember when I heard that at that time, it was like, uh, again, it was another like huge weight of shame on me. Mm -hmm. It was a huge pressure. It felt like a giant responsibility because it hit me so deep. It, it made so much sense to me. It felt so right. Like, if I actually believe what I'm talking about, then what do my actions need to do to reflect that? And I think, I guess a lot of Christians talk about that mm -hmm. often. Like, that's like a youth group thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, walk the walk, talk the talk, or whatever. Talk the talk, walk the walk. Yeah. So, I mean, that concept, this isn't like a new concept, but I think it gets muddy when you start to apply that to, like, real life issues, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, coronavirus is a real life and like sickness and illness is a real life. I think I don't know many Christians who, if they were diagnosed with cancer, would not go to the doctor and they would just pray about it. Mm -hmm. I know some would. Mm -hmm. I, I know that that's a thing. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's like also really dangerous and irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's been parents who have been like put in prison and stuff because they neglected their child because their faith was stronger than their belief in medicine. Mm -hmm. Like that's a, that's a problem. Um, but again, in terms of the religion, I feel like if you are truly a Christian and you're truly wanting to have as strong of a faith as possible, then maybe that's what your faith should be, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, I think like that makes it seem so dangerous. I think that's like why it's dangerous. I think this yeah. is like why now when looking back, like we can see in a way that faith is really dangerous. It's not just dangerous in that you know, more obvious sense where you're not bringing your kids to the hospital and they're dying, like not extreme like that, but just that it's clouding your vision because mm -hmm. you're holding this other thing, this idea of God so high above every other like rational decision-making. Yeah. And I think that I, th I feel like that's kind of why Christians though love to flaunt that verse, you know, the things you know, the things that we're doing are foolishness in the eyes of the world mm -hmm. because they are crazy, but like, <laughs> that's, that's the true. only verse that they have to be like this. See, this is why it's okay. This is, this means that we're good. That like, yeah. we're supposed to look like this. We're supposed to look crazy. You're right. But I don't know. That's all they, that's the only like place that they have to, <clears throat> Oh my God, do I have the coronavirus? Oh, no. <laughs> um, that's not, that's funny. not funny. Um, well, it's another one of the, it's another like way that it's just an out, you know, like you, if you have a verse that says everyone else is going to think you're crazy, then that kind of like makes Christians feel like, well, 
we can be crazy. The Bible says that everyone's going to think we're crazy. And, and in fact, if other people think that we're crazy, that's probably confirmation that what we believe is right. Mm -hmm. So it's, again, it's like narrowing and limiting and your perspective gets narrower and more and more focused and more and more single tracked. And you get more and more disconnected from logic and rationality and reality. You know, I just had a thought. I wonder if that's why I grew up being such a contrarian, because I always thought that if I was believing something that other people weren't, that I was more level headed. Interesting. You know, like that's yeah. like, that's the correct way to believe, you know, like you have to stand out from the crowd because yeah. the pack is like followers. You yeah. know what I mean? That's a thing. There's an, I don't know mm -hmm. what the word is for it, but I know that's a, uh, that's like something that is happening now. And people talk about it in terms of, uh, groups of people who don't believe in like modern medicine and who believe way more in like essential oils or, or mm -hmm. certain homeopathic things or whatever, like basically where it's gotten to the point where it feels like you're more, uh, you're believing the right thing if you're in the minority. You know what mm -hmm, I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, and I think it kind of makes sense. And I, I think there's, there's definitely areas where we feel that way, yeah. like where there's, we're kind of deviating from the majority yes. and choosing different paths and whatever. And I think that's fine. But I do think that there's kind of a trend right now where everyone feels like they can't trust the majority. They can't trust like what the media is telling I us. I mean, and I so, feel that yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's like an ex super extreme version of that. And uh -huh. also like a reasonable version of that. Like use your mind, you know, think for yourself, mm -hmm. all that. It is interesting though. I think that growing up Christian actually really encourages you to be kind of contrary and, and like gravitate towards the minority and kind of want to be someone who sticks out or has like beliefs that are different from everyone else's. Yeah. I liked that about being a Christian. I remember like you kind of like being not hated, but just someone that people would be like, I liked being set apart like, and like, I guess set apart, like yeah, kind of weird, Christian you know, like a little bit, phrase. a little off or mm -hmm. not off, but mm -hmm. like, I liked being the person who's like different and who's mm -hmm. kind of like, Oh, they have their own ideas. You know, that was, mm -hmm. I thought that was cool when mm -hmm. I was a Christian. And obviously you can still have that when you're not, but I think you're right that that, that tendency probably does continue on and, uh, might be something that still affects us now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess the, like the question is, and it's for Christians more than us, I guess, but it kind of is for anyone. Where does your, where does that line between like belief and, uh, rationality start to break down? And I think it's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. I think, I think for all Christians and all religious people, there probably is some line that like at that point, they kind of have to set their belief down in order to like, just actually get something done. And I'm thinking of like in the can the case of someone getting diagnosed with cancer, uh, a lot of Christians would like pray to an extent and they would pray for healing of course, but like, they're also going to go to the doctor mm -hmm. and they're going to go and get chemotherapy mm -hmm. and they're going to go and get treatment that's like made to, to get rid of cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and why, and at what point does like, what if you didn't pray and what if they just went to chemotherapy? Yeah. So that's the question now is like, well, it, it seems clear now, like, well, you got better because you went to chemotherapy and you had like tons of medicine and hundreds of years of science, mm -hmm. like development of science, you know, taking mm -hmm. care of you. Um, but uh, my, I guess my question is why doesn't that disconnect bother anyone? Right? Why mm -hmm. doesn't it bother Christians? Mm -hmm. I guess it's, maybe it does. It's but. difficult to say because I feel like we probably felt that way, but you know, or we were, we understood that as a concept, mm -hmm. but I don't think that we really had the same view of it as we would now, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure there were so many excuses that we gave. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, like, I mean, everything that we found out now, we, we look back and kind of feel like that we are a little bit blinded, mm -hmm. but then we had our blinders on about things. Yeah. There were things that back, I was just trying to think like, what were we believing for when we were Christian? And I was thinking like, as a simple example, I would pray to God and ask him to like, bring us closer together mm -hmm. all the time and like make our relationship better. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I would be like living with you and like trying to have a better relationship yeah. with you and like doing things, going on dates and like spending quality time together and, you know like trying to get closer to you just like a normal person would yeah. by spending time with you yeah. at the same time as praying. And so in a certain sense, it's like, well, do you have belief in God? Like, do you have faith that God is helping you 
or are you just doing what anybody else would do and then kind of adding this thing on mm. at night right before you fall asleep in your head? No, that's a good way to put it. And then giving all the credit to God when mm. it does happen. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I because I feel that that is something that we had always we have always struggled with as Christians because even you, you know, you having like even just like simply like you struggling with, do I have just a regular job? Like, Mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like fully that I really believe that God could provide for me. Yeah. You know, I'm just having a job. I'm living like everyone else. Like I have a secular job, you know? Yeah. And if I really believed that God was going to take care of me, I would have held out and like done something in ministry. If, if the opportunity was given to me or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, exactly that. You're right. Um, I, I always had a hard time with like balance and I, I felt like, I guess these questions actually did bother me when I was Christian uh-huh. because I never, I could never ever figure out like in a broad sense, how to live a human life and also have total faith in God. Mm-hmm. This was like actually mm-hmm. my, probably my biggest struggle when I was yeah. a Christian. The thing that was the heaviest on me and bothered me the most was that I'm claiming to believe these things. I'm claiming to be a hundred percent committed to God. I'm claiming that my faith is unwavering and that without a shadow of a doubt, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that without that I'd be spending eternity in hell. Like I, I believed that, but on the other hand, I still like had to pay our mortgage and I still had to like go and pick up my dog's poop from the backyard. And I still had to go and like do stuff. I had, still, to, I had to be a person. You still took so many vitamins. I t- Yeah. I like, I exercised and I tried to eat healthy and mm-hmm. I took vitamins and I'd go to the doctor and you know, these things aren't obviously aren't bad things, but like if you're claiming to have total faith in this God that is supposed to sustain you in every way, then like, where does, where does that, where does your part come in? with that uh-huh. and what's what's enough faith and like do you really have faith and all of that i struggle with that stuff i know like crazy i feel like this is a really nuanced conversation because we've heard so many sermons where people are like okay yeah your body's a temple and god gave it to you and it's a gift and so that's why you take care of it and that's mm-hmm. why you have vitamins that's why you work out blah 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 blah. that's why you go to the doctor whatever god has like placed doctors in the world so that you know we can be blessed by them whatever but like that's fine. And I can, I can understand how that fits in if you want to believe it like that. But then at a certain point you're like, well, what if you just stopped believing in God, stopped talking about him, praying to him, but did everything else that you do in order to take care of your body, just because maybe it's a good way to live. Would you come out of that the same way on the other side? Yeah. And I think that's the questions that really struggled. I struggled with and like really ultimately made me leave religion is because I'm just thinking like, is there an unnecessary part of this equation? You know, like, is there a middleman or just something I'm stressing about that I don't need to add to my life? Yeah. And it it turned out that in my case, yes, there was an unnecessary part in that equation. And that, you know, right now people are probably, if they do have strong faith and they do believe that God will heal, they probably don't have a lot of stress. And, you know, Right now, we are, and I think other people that we, our friends, are trying to remain positive and just do what you can, because that's all you can do. Yeah. And But when you don't have the stress, like whether you're Christian or not, you have a happier day-to-day life. Mm-hmm. And like you still, you know, we still can't affect what's going to happen. Like it's still, we're not completely in control of that. But like at least moment to moment, the worry is not like just beating down on our bodies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I feel like you can have a similar experience, whether you're Christian or not, whether you believe or not. But I think it's interesting. You say that, you know, people, they have that faith, they tack it on at the end of the night, you know, when they're praying or at the end of the day, you know, after they've like stocked up on all their toilet paper and all their (laughs) stuff from Costco, then they're like, okay, God, thanks for protecting me. Yeah. Even though they went to a place that seems like the worst harbor of the disease. <laughs> Costco. <laughs> Honestly, I went. Oh my gosh. Side story. I guys. went <laughs> there for the first time and I was, I was like, this is, we are idiots for coming here. It was right when I, the beginning when everybody was starting to realize how serious yeah. coronavirus like was. And I'm like, ago. why did we yeah. choose to come here now? I'm definitely going to get this disease. I don't know much about it at the time, yeah. but 
Yeah. <laughs> but I guess if you had that faith in Jesus, you would just expect not to contract it. I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what, what I would have thought at that time, you know. But I really like how you put that, that it, it was like an unnecessary part of the equation of life mm-hmm. that for me was causing me like so much stress and weight and anxiety. And I, I talked about it with you all the time mm-hmm. when I was Christian, I talked about it with your dad and with our pastors and everything. It's yeah. like, what did they say? Do you remember? They, it was so frustrating because they would just be like, well, you know, it, it's all about balance and like you can live your life and you can, you can go to work and you can be work in a secular place, but you can still do it for God's glory. And I'm always feeling like, what does that mean? Like, what do yeah. you mean? Mm-hmm. Or like, what about the Bible says like your pr- prayers should never cease. You know, I, I want to pray without ceasing. Well, like, obviously if I'm coding at work, I'm not like praying to God at the same time, mm-hmm. like writing code for some HVAC system to like turn the air conditioner on at the right time. Mm-hmm. Well, it's that, all about balance. How, like how is God being glorified by that? You know, when he's completely out of my mind, that was the type of stuff that really bothered me mm-hmm. is like, I don't, I don't feel like you can actually be a f- Christian and live a life. I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I felt like what the Bible asks of Christian and, and like the level of faith and commitment and surety, um, that Christianity requires, I think is actually impossible to maintain. Like nobody mm-hmm. can do that. And maybe a monk, well, that's like maybe why you, you could... wanted to, at one point, like you were like, I wish we could just go live in, in a commune. Yeah. And no, share I like actually everything, wanted that. Yeah. And, you know, and with people around us who believed in God and yeah. like, and that would have been, that would have been another way of life. I know. You know? And I'm still a hippie. I still feel like that. There's part of me that's like, yeah, that simple life. Like that sounds pretty <laughs> yeah, tight right but now. Yeah, and you don't need God. You don't need God. But you still yeah, like, don't need it in that equation. You're right. You you're, could just give, you could just get, be giving to people that's and, a really love, good point. and share like with them out of love. Yeah. Like your God could be just love. You could experience the simplicity that I'm like seeking without the, you know, I think that's the biggest thing that I come back to actually that right there. And like how it would be so hard for me to become a Christian again is because that it is not a unique experience. Um, you know, all you, you know, what Christianity and church forces you to be very intentional and be very conscious in a way. Yeah. And so if you just apply intentionality and consciousness to your life and, and love, you can have that spiritual a experience, beautiful life, beautiful yeah. experience. And yeah. I mean, like that's, that's easier said than done. But if that's like the kind of life you want, like you can set an intention each day, you could basically pray each day, but just like through meditation yeah. or whatever. And I, I think about that all the time that like we, that it's just not a unique experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're right. No matter what like form of spirituality you find, like yeah. the types of, feelings that you get that the benefits are very similar. Yeah. Well that, I mean, we experienced that firsthand and that was like probably one of the biggest steps in our deconversion was when we stopped going to church, we decided to stop praying, like stop reading the Bible, stop doing any of our Christian stuff, essentially removing God from the equation mm-hmm. of our life. And this was like very soon after we first started having doubts, we kind of did this like a bit of an experiment, I guess. Um, and when we removed God from that equation, our life continued on like exactly how it was mm-hmm. when we were living with God and putting that in quotes, like we felt like our life was going to change drastically. We took God out of the equation. We realized what the heck, like everything is exactly the same. I feel mm-hmm. the same. I have the same thoughts. I'm like, you know, all of that. Mm-hmm. And that realization like really cracked things open for me. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh man, I, th- I think I might've made it. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's an interesting question. Like, like do Christians really believe, you know? And I say that in, in a way not to be like, well, you should feel ashamed. You should be a better <laughs> Christian and you should have more faith. But like, honestly, if you do actually believe that God is real and that hell is real, why aren't you telling everyone about it? Like, if you are telling me that you actually believe that, then by you not like telling all the non-Christians in your life, what the dealio, what your dealio is, Mm -hmm. then you are a bad person. Like that sucks. When we were discussing this topic, I was saying to Joe, like, it sounds like you're going to be preaching some kind of sermon. Like Like how to be a better Christian. How to be a better Christian, (laughs) like bringing down shame on those who aren't living this way. But it's like, I feel like coming at it from this perspective, it's kind of, I don't know. It's, it's still there. Like, 
do you really believe what you're saying you believe yeah. and not like in a shame way, but maybe if you don't, maybe you realize that there's another way to live. Yeah. Well, in my, I feel like my message, if there's anything to take away from it, is that you don't believe as strongly as you say, mm-hmm. and then that's a generalization maybe, but you don't believe as strongly and as you say. And if you do and tell you everybody, do, respect. <laughs> yeah, sure. Respect. <laughs> and if your faith is that strong, you're like doing a good job at your religion but that's a stupid way to live because you are like so blinded by a lot of things, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, I I don't want to say it's a stupid way to live. I was Christian (laughs) and I know there's a lot of people in my life who are Christians and I love them dearly. And I don't think they're stupid people. I don't at all. And I don't think that I was a stupid person when I was Christian. I think I was just misinformed, you know, Mm -hmm. but I'm saying like for people who don't bring their kids to the doctor because they think God told them to pray for them instead. I think that's stupid. That's Mm -hmm. irresponsible for people to hold church meetings because they think that God is more important than the disease and that now is the best time that they should come together and pray. I think that's stupid. That's irresponsible. That's, Mm -hmm. that's like, it's foolish. So like, it's great if you have a lot of faith, I guess, you know, you're good at your religion. If you're really faithful and you believe strongly as possible, but it's like, it's bad for humanity to have Mm -hmm. people who are like so entrenched in this worldview who are actually living out what the Bible tells them to do. It's dangerous Mm -hmm. and it's weird. It's dangerous. Yeah. It's, it's dangerous in so many ways, just like the mindset it creates and everything, everything about it is like blinding and confounding and it it makes you act irrationally and separates you from the rest of humanity. Mm -hmm. It's, it's bizarre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel it's funny. I feel like, really good talking about this now in this capacity, because like we were just saying before that whole issue of balance and like trying to balance having a normal life with also having perfect faith. Mm -hmm. That was like torture to me trying Mm -hmm. to hold those two things and like maintain both all the time. It it sucked. I like, it was really, really difficult and I was down on myself for it all the time. And I Mm -hmm. think I like trained myself to generally be down on myself for that very reason, because no matter what, you can do, you are never, ever going to live up to the standard that the Bible lays out for like a good Christian. Mm -hmm. You're never going to come close to that. Mm -hmm. So talking about it now on this side of things where it feels like it makes so much more sense. And like, I'm kind of, I've zoomed out from my bubble and I'm kind of looking at my past life as an observer more than like being in the middle of it feels really good. It feels healing. I feel like, Oh, what a relief, you Mm -hmm. know, like you don't have to I don't have to balance anything. Like I can just live, you know, and Mm -hmm. I can get into things and I can be spiritual and I can have beliefs and and all that. And that's great. But like, I don't have that heavy, heavy pressure of living up to a standard that's like totally unattainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honestly, like some of the problems we have now seem when I think about like the problems we like created in our mind for ourselves back as Christians, like it makes these problems seem like so much easier Oh, I know. to get around. Yeah. You know, I kind of feel like thankful for that. Yeah. You know, it puts things in perspective because we do obviously still have problems, you know, and like struggles and everything, but it's just like not, there's no added level of yeah standard that you mm-hmm. need to like holy divine, like godly standard or you're missing the mark. Yeah. We can decide our own standards and how much mm-hmm. healthier and more empowering is that? I think there's, there's like a lot we're still feeling and like suffering from and, and like fighting about (laughs) like the effects that living in that Christian way had on us. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that there, our body is like very sensitive and it holds a lot of things and like it's affected by the way we live. Mm -hmm. And I think that whatever 15 years of living in that turmoil of like trying to balance life versus always coming up short on the faith that I'm claiming to have that like does take a toll on you. Mm -hmm. You know, it changes the way you think and the way you feel. And I know for myself that I'm like living through that now and just kind of trying to uncover some of the effect that that had on me among all the other stuff that all the other effects that Christianity, Christianity had on me. Um, but yeah, it, it like, it just feels so much better to be having this conversation on this side of things and like seeing things from this perspective and kind of understanding, Hey, like we had faith, but like our faith didn't totally extend. And this is probably why it was so hard. And you know, this is probably why it was such turmoil and why it's so much easier now. It just, Mm -hmm. it makes sense and it feels good. Mm -hmm. You know? Wow. Joe, I have, I don't think I've ever heard you talk on here that strongly. I think it's because it sounds like a sermon 
And no, so, I think I think just <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised how many times you you said stupid. <laughs> oh, I'm such a bad boy now. This I, I say what is where now I say stupid, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Well, as you can tell, I'm a real bad boy now, and we love to talk about this stuff. Wow, the devil really has changed us. It, wow. <laughs> for the better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's changed me for the better. I can say stupid now. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, I guess if there's any takeaway from this, I'd say, if there's any Christians listening, I'd say... Sorry. S- sorry, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, Examine your faith, and I, I think maybe you might say that you're 100% certain about things, but I think when it really came down to it, if you were, like, down on the wire, you would you would not trust God first. You'd trust... You'd be like, like fuck it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you'd be like, I'm going to trust man because he's right in front of me, and he's... Or woman, you know, as woman. generalization. Mm-hmm. I'm going to trust the doctors because they actually can, like, do something as opposed to just nothing at all, yeah. ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Examine your faith figure out uh, what do you actually believe, figure out if your faith is helping you or if your beliefs are just an unnecessary middleman that are causing you more stress than you deserve. Mm -hmm. All right. So until next week, hope you guys chill out and we'll talk to you then. Tune in next week to see how Mad Joe can get about some other issue.